So there's a video we didn't get to in the main show that I definitely want to share with you guys now. In fact, uh, someone shared it with me on Twitter and I loved it, so now I'm sharing it with you today. So Hillary Clinton had a fascinating moment of clarity and honesty during an interview with Greta Van Susteren on Fox News. Now clearly this is an old interview, but it's relevant given the fact that US troops have been withdrawn from Afghanistan and the Taliban has taken control of the country. Now uh, Hillary Clinton was asked about the war in Afghanistan back in the day and what she said was brutally honest and correct. Let's watch. To be fair, we had helped to create the problem we're now fighting. How? Because when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, we had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen, equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan. And we were successful. The Soviets left Afghanistan. And then we said, great, goodbye, leaving these trained people who were fanatical in Afghanistan and Pakistan, leaving them well armed, creating a mess, frankly, that uh, at the time we didn't really recognize. We were just so happy to see the Soviet Union fall and we thought, okay, fine, we're, we're okay now. Everything's gonna be so much better. Now you look back, the people we're fighting today, we were supporting in the fight against the Soviets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, uh it, what's really frustrating about the media is that there will be moments of clarity like that and then everybody has collective amnesia as if she never said it, right? As if that wasn't true. And by the way, her saying it doesn't make it true, her not saying it doesn't make it false, right? But in this case, she she is correct. And now the reason why it's relevant that Hillary Clinton says it is because the media is obsessed with people who are credible. Another way of pronouncing that is powerful. And so since the media serves the powerful, when someone like Hillary Clinton says it, sometimes they pay attention. Mm -hmm. Like otherwise with the knuckleheads, they, they, they know how many people that work in media know that we arm the Mujahideen, right? How many people that many work in media care? even right. know what Mujahideen is, right? And so that's the sorry state of journalism in America. And, and look, I gotta be honest, the, uh, She's talking about a segment. She's not referring to the segment that I did, but it's the same topic. And it's one of the pieces that I'm most proud of in, in all the nearly 20 years that we've done TYT. Because I broke down uh, why the Muslim world got as radicalized. Uh, this again, not the whole world, a small percentage, but an important percentage got radicalized. And it was two governments that were primarily responsible. One was the Saudi government and the deal that they struck with the Wahhabis. And the second government was America because of what Hillary Clinton was referring to there. I went and read uh, foreign policy magazines, books, etc., And it became clear that both the Saudis and the Americans captured the local media, newspapers and radio stations most of all, but some TV as well. And they pumped in the message that radical Islam was great and that if you were a true Muslim, you would be violent. And wow. isn't that amazing? And then they gave Stinger missiles to the Mujahideen yep, yep. and said, now go get who? The godless atheists in the Soviet Union. So if you were a true Muslim, you would kill the atheists. Mm -hmm. So that was our uh, contribution to radicalizing some portion of Islam. The Saudis did it all over the world in Southeast Asia and, and Middle East, obviously, etc. And if you look at, back at old pictures, not only are there skirts on the streets of Iraq, Syria, but also in Afghanistan and certainly in Iran, right? So the, all those places were more modern in the 1960s and 70s. And why did they switch in the 80s? Because that's when the Soviet Union went into Afghanistan, and that's when the Saudis struck the deal with the Wahhabis. Mm -hmm. And then they go and buy the media and influence uh, Muslims to be more violent and more fundamentalist. To defeat the Soviets. To defeat the Soviets. Yeah. But then they unleash this monster right. that we've been fighting ever since. And now you think, well, oops, that was blowback that we didn't expect. Yes, that's true, and I don't think that it was that conspiratorial, conspiratorial when they first did it in terms of leading to more wars and that being a good thing. But it did turn out that defense contractors loved it, aided and abetted it, 
and certainly poured fuel on that fire with all the politicians going forward. They're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, we should militarize, violence is the answer. And if uh, now we radicalize some portion of Muslims, and we have to fight them for the next 20 years? Well, that's giant profits for the defense industry. Right, they see it as a win-win. Yeah, right? so they didn't lose, they won. We but lost. We lost, exactly. And so what I appreciated about that exchange wasn't that I agree with what the United States did to defeat the Soviets in Afghanistan. But I think that that's a perfect example of how the United States and its foreign policy goes in and like, essentially just creates more problems through its um, interventions, right? So in this case, we're talking about Afghanistan, but the same could be said of so many other countries that the United States uh, meddled in and decided they didn't like the government of, right? Whether it be Guatemala, whether it be Iran's a perfect example. I mean, they don't like the, the theocratic regime in Iran that the United States installed. The United States did that. I mean, it's just, I mean, the United States orchestrated a coup to topple a democratically elected leader and installed the theocracy that they're now wanting to fight against. This is what we see happen over and over and over again. And what's fascinating is that that's, that clip featuring Hillary Clinton, pretty much forgotten. Someone uh, sent it to me on Twitter today and I thought it was fascinating. I had never seen that uh, clip. And that's why I'm sharing it with you guys today. I think it's, uh, something that could help us learn from the mistakes of our past. Yeah, well, at least one more thing here. First of all, um, oh, we helped uh, the Afghans defeat uh, the Soviet Union. Do the Afghans look like they need help in defeating empires? And they got that on lockdown. Uh, they've been doing it for hundreds if not thousands of years now. Go ask the Persian Empire, go ask the Russian Empire, our empire, etc. Now you go in those valleys and you're gonna come running out. That's what's gonna happen, it's just a matter of time, right? So they didn't need us to radicalize them to defeat the Soviet Union. It was just an unmitigated disaster on our end. But remember, again, the powerful got rich off of it, so they're, they're not upset about it at all. And there is one extra element to it, which is, look, Israel did the same thing with Hamas. They thought, oh, I have a genius idea, we'll split up the PLO, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, uh, and they did, they split up the Palestinians and they got them fighting with one another and they think mission accomplished. Except the thing that came out of that was Hamas. Oops, not mission accomplished. Now you think for the citizens of Israel that's terrible, for the citizens of America for what we've done, it's that we've had so much blowback and it's been terrible, right? But when you look at it from the perspective of right wing leaders, whether it's the Netanyahu's or the Cheney's or the Trump's or the Bush's of the world, they think, wait, was it so bad? Every time there's war, people get scared and they vote for the right winger. That's right. And so that's why Netanyahu on his way out tried to start another war because he was worried that he was about to lose power. It didn't work in his case, uh, but that he went to that well like 20 times when he, as leader of Israel. It, Cheney refused to take a deal with Iran, uh, even though we would have had peace literally now 17 years ago with Iran if Cheney had taken that deal. Um, he said, we don't negotiate with evil. The Taliban offered up bin Laden, we didn't take that. Right. We had uh, Al-Qaeda cornered in, and bin Laden cornered in Tora Bora, Rumsfeld said no to that. Why do they keep saying no to peace and to things that would help us? Because they're not us, they're the powerful, they're the elites. And for the right wing, they get tons of money from defense contractors and they get to stay in power if there's more conflict and more war. And so Hillary Clinton revealed a small piece of that there, but the rest of the media instantly forgot it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.